Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to SBI Cards and Payment Services Limited Q1 FY25 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhijit Chakravarti, MD and CEO. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. I'm pleased to welcome you to the SBI Cards Q1 FY 2024-25 earnings call along with my senior management team. India continues to be fastest growing major economies across the world. As per estimates, India's real GDP growth forecast for FY25 is likely to be around 7.2%. India's credit card market has already crossed 100 million outstanding credit cards as of June 2024. Monthly, credit, monthly card spends have also reached Rupees 1.58 lakh crore in June 2024. As the credit card industry exhibits promising growth path, SBI card continues to be the beneficiary as well as one of the key contributors. Let us now look at SBI card's business overview in Q1 FY25. Our resilient and sustainable business model built over the years helps us in achieving profitable business growth. Our cards in force are at 1.92 crore with 11% year-on-year growth. We continue to be the second largest credit card issuer in the country and our cards in force market share is at 18.5%. During Q1 FY25, our new account acquisition was at 9.04 lakhs. This enabled net new card addition to be at 3.5 lakhs, which is 17.4% of the industry. Banka contributed 42% of new accounts and the balance coming from open market and co grants. There is seasonality factor associated with Banka acquisition in Q1. While customer interest continues to stay strong in terms of applicants, we have been further selective in acquiring new customers. These incremental selection parameters have been implemented to further improve our new customer acquisition credit quality. We have gone live with our instant card issuance journey on SBI's digital platforms such as YONO and Internet Banking. We would be focusing more on growing and acquiring new customers by leveraging these digital journeys. Our total card spends during Q1 FY25 stands at 77,129 crores with a 4% year-on-year growth, despite the growth of around 66% in the corporate spends. Retail spends remain strong at rupees 71,880 crore with a 23% year-on-year increase in Q1 FY25. SBI card spends market share in Q1 FY25 is at 15.9%. During Q1 FY25, we have seen strong growth across all key discretionary and non-discretionary spends. Jewelry segment has seen strong spend growth rate at 11% year-on-year in Q1 FY25, influenced by Akshay Tritya during the quarter. The consumer durables category witnessed a strong 85% year-on-year growth during the quarter with high sale of appliances and mobiles. Online spends continue to contribute to around 57% of total retail spends. 50% of our customers make new purchases every month.
ladies and gentlemen the line for the management has been disconnected please stay connected while we reconnect the management line Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management has been reconnected. So you may please go ahead. Yeah, apologies for disconnect. So I'll repeat: fifty percent of our customers make new purchases every month. Installment-based transactions have grown thirty-seven percent year on year, indicating customers' comfort with affordability options. Corporate spends during the quarter have ended at. Rupees five thousand two hundred and forty-nine crore. It has been increasing consistently month by month, with June month contribution at forty-five percent. In Q1 FY twenty-five, as well as as well, we rolled out many new customer-centric initiatives. A key initiative has been the introduction of our travel-centric credit card SBI card miles. with increasing popularity of travel among indians we have introduced this card with an aim to bring in holistic travel benefits to travelers of all kinds travel aspirants to frequent flyers to travel aficionados since its launch it has already seen an extremely positive response from the consumers Rupee card spends at UPI terminals have grown by 50% this quarter also. Our monthly average UPI spends per active account has been stable at around rupees 12,800 in Q1 FY25. Department stores and grocery, restaurants, fuel, utilities and apparel have been among the top five categories for UPI spends. Tier two plus customers. continue to utilize this facility as this facility increases the number of acceptance outlets for rupee cards rupee card spends on upi terminals has crossed 1000 crore plus per month on regular basis during q1 fy25 sbi card partnered apple to launch an offer wherein our card holders could avail up to rupees 6000 instant discount across different apple products applicable for both emi and non emi transactions this offer is being extensively advertised across airports television print ads and social media we have continued with varied esg initiatives during the quarter including celebrating environment month with employees in june featuring impactful initiatives including seed ball making and awareness compare campaign on biodiversity waste water and renewable energy initiating three impactful csr endeavors by investing rupees 11.51 crore for elderly care children with cancer assistance and climate smart agriculture We are extremely pleased to share that SBI card has been recognized and awarded two coveted awards, including Media Abyss 2024 Silver Award in Innovative Use of Radio category for the radio campaign on its 25th anniversary celebrations. Coming to financial parameters in Q1 FY25, our focus business momentum. has also helped us in registering healthy financial growth in Q1 FY25 let me share some key ones total revenue has grown to rupees 4483 crore with a with an 11% year on year growth during Q1 FY25 in Q1 FY25 SBI card has registered a pat of rupees 594 crore Versus rupees 593 crore in Q1 FY24. In line with strong spend growth rate, our receivables have seen strong growth too. Receivables have grown by 22% year on year in Q1 FY25 to rupees 
52,705 crore. Receivables per card have grown by around 8% year on year to Rs. 27,395 in Q1 FY25. Our initiatives and focus to increase the earning receivables have begun to reflect positively. The share of earning receivables is at 62% in Q1 FY25. Our cost of fund has increased by 13 basis, 13 basis point, 13 basis points to 7.5% for Q1 FY25. We expect cost of fund to remain around at around current levels going forward till we see any rate cut action. However, net interest margin during the quarter has remained stable at 10.9%. Our cost to income for Q1 FY25 is at 49.1%. The decrease is going to lower corporate spends during Q1 FY25. Now a comment on asset quality for the company. You may recall in our last earning call, we had indicated that we expected credit costs to remain elevated in near future with variations during the year. Our credit costs for Q1 FY25 has increased to 8.5% as compared to 7.5% in Q4 FY24. GNPA is at 3.06% as compared to 2.9% in Q4 FY24. Incremental provisions are up by rupees 51 crores quarter on quarter. Write-offs have increased quarter on quarter by rupees 105 crore. The primary reason for increase in credit cost, as have been explained earlier, is that customers obtaining multiple trade lines from other lenders after taking a card, and this over-leveraging has impacted their repayment capacity. Reduced payment capacity has also been seen in customers where light events have led to delinquency. This has been seen with vintage customers having good repayment behavior until now. We continue to review portfolio and scorecards across a wide range of vectors to identify accounts requiring special attention. Accordingly, multiple actions have been taken based on portfolio diagnostics and bureau information and triggers. These include refinement in new account sourcing, reduction in limits, restrictions on cross-sell, and spend trigger-based early blocking, enhancements in scorecards, and enrichment of predictive models for portfolio management, customer payment assist programs, and augmentation of collection infrastructure. Our new sourcing continues to perform better on early delinquency trends. The credit cost continues to stay elevated despite actions taken as mentioned earlier. The impact has somewhat, somewhat been offset by prevailing environmental factors and industry challenges. Therefore, in response, we have further intensified our collection efforts and scope of our portfolio actions. For example, during last three months, we have reduced limits across five lakh accounts in comparison to the 5 lakhs done over the previous full financial year. Similarly, in collections, we have significantly increased the capacity across all channels. Given the present market scenario, we expect credit costs to remain elevated. A reduced in trend is likely only towards the later part of the financial year. Our capital adequacy ratio is at 20.6% for Q1 FY25. In Q1 FY25, our ROAA is 4.1%. Our ROAE is at 19.1% during the quarter. In conclusion, the India credit card industry is at an exciting intersection of increasing discretionary consumption growing digital payments, along with evolving customer credit behavior towards EMIs, and greater awareness around credit profile. 
in the prevailing environment our top most priority is to be agile and take portfolio actions with speed and ensure that credit costs come under control at the same time we are committed to build and grow our business for the long term so now we are open to the questions should we open the floor for questions yes please yes thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Piran Engineer from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, hi, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, first, we just wanted to understand what are like what are the levers we can take to offset credit costs. So, I understand the collection part of it, but anything on the top line front, for example, increasing the revolver, uh, you know, charge from three and a half percent to four percent, something like that. Uh, so many things i understand are regulated like interchange etc you can't do much uh, but what are the levers we can take apart from the collection etc to offset the impact of credit costs uh, so the lever that you mentioned which is the interest rate with respect to revolvers uh, that specifically we would not like to take at this point of time take action in terms of increasing the uh, interest rate because over a period of time we have seen that the good customer revenue which is coming is coming from installment lending customer so if the customer takes the installment lending gives us fee gives us interest income and does not default that is a better way rather than getting a higher interest and even increasing that we are already at 3.5% per month which is almost 42% apr so increasing that is not a good idea that is point one second thing is that uh, yes there are uh, other places where you can increase uh, uh, take actions with but they are more with respect to the fee income with where the customer you are providing a service and the customer utilizes for example we did that with respect to putting a fee on the rental side of it uh we would be looking at certain set of fees over a period of time to defray some of that uh, however we have to get the credit cost in control and that is what our md sir was saying that that is the first primary action while from a revenue perspective the action steps will continue to get taken okay okay fair enough Uh, secondly just trying to understand uh, uh, you know on your new underwriting measures now we've acquired 9 lakh new customers uh, this quarter now can you just give us a sense say for example how many are new to credit how many are new to credit card uh while we will give you specific breakup of how many are new to credit and new to credit cards uh however uh want to detail out that the interest of new customers is uh consistent people are applying for the card we have been being more selective about this okay 60% of the customers are carded customers 42 40% customers are new to credit or uh, new to credit card but we acquire most of these customers only through our bank card channel okay the carded one uh, the non carded one is with your bank card channel correct correct so new to credit and new to credit card is through bank card channel okay but then sir if i may just ask like 
the problem essentially is over leveraging now someone has a card he or she is coming to you for a second card maybe third card i don't know then why are we giving such customers a card so uh we have our data with us and our portfolio we have seen that we have when we onboard a customer even an ntc or a customer having zero active trade lines at the time of onboarding over a period of time and we have analyzed our uh, return of uh, portfolio we find that at the time of write off they carry a minimum of 1 to 5 going up to 10 trade lines so one is the position how many trade lines were there minimal a uh, bureau score prime all taken together onboarding not an issue but post onboarding the behavior changes hmm okay and then in in such a case could this be a possibility i don't know if it will be a uh, appeal to the customer or not but uh, in the terms and conditions you have that if that customer takes another credit card then his limit will be reduced by whatever 25% 40% something like that. can we have a rule based engine out here which uh, makes the credit exposure for you more flexible depending on the leverage of the customer which is somewhat similar to what microfinance companies are doing uh, in a way uh, could something like that be a possibility because there does not seem to be an end in sight for the credit cost problem for the industry uh, you're right ran uh, what is done is that first of all if we have given a card to the customer and if there is a second financial uh, institution which wants to give a card or a loan they should be looking at debt to income and already whatever has been given to the customer we also continue to monitor even let's say after years customer has come to us over a period of time how the if more trade lines are getting added more debt is getting taken and uh, you're right action is taken if we believe that the customer debt repayment uh, capacity keeps going down and hence all the credit line decreases which has been done over a period of time uh the good part is after last september october rbi's decision of increasing capital adequacy so funding the there were players who were not looking at some of these metrics i think now all the large banks and all the large institutions look at that and this this problem should not be continuing over a period of time this will get uh, this this is going to get addressed so that is uh, uh, where we are at this point of time it is monitored continuously models are being run on a regular basis which is the regular scorecards for your portfolio management and basis the if you see a high risk or movement of scores uh, immediate action is being taken rather than waiting for the uh, default to occur thank you we will move on to the next question but before we move to the next question would like to announce please restrict your questions to two per participant if you have any follow up questions please rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of marook adachania from nuama please go ahead yeah hi good evening so uh, in the last con call we had discussed that there are no uh, cohorts in terms of vintage that are contributing to higher delinquencies or costs right they are uh, kind of cohort or vintage agnostic so um i mean is it that customers across cohorts are multi leveraging as in that even customers that you may have onboarded say a year or year and a half ago is it happening across cohorts and is the culture really deteriorating or how do we look at it yes so we find that the delinquency is moving across uh the segment there is still no cohort identifiable while if we talk about vintage we have seen accounts which have been doing well for last 4 to 5 years also suddenly become delinquent and the behavior part is very unique 
once this account becomes delinquent pdd there are not a single penny comes and that's where when we uh, go for collection efforts we largely find that there has been a lifetime event that has happened that is one another is that um uh, if we leave aside vintage we have found the delinquencies going across salary going across uh, self employed going across peers of city so uh, we have not found any specific behavior happening with any specific cohort that could have led us to do some analysis and introduce certain action having said that only one uh, indication that was found earlier last year and we have implemented was a geography based delinquency pattern when we found that a specific geography was largely uh, behaving uh, abnormally we took actions and we stopped out sourcing from those geographies based on the pin code identification except that we have not largely found any specific cohort it so it, the delinquency is more on the uh, customer behavior or the inability to pay got it and uh, in terms of opex uh, we uh, how long do you see it remaining subdued okay so the opex so uh, uh, earlier commentary is lower this quarter because of the lower profit trends and also because of the lower card compared to previous quarter as we build our corporate card you know spend business again and the card come back to the range of about a 9 lakh to a million card a quarter uh, this should as we've been saying earlier stabilize around that mid 50s level obviously the cyclicality is seasonality is there uh, depending upon uh, the month and we run the campaign okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rohan mandora from equidia securities please go ahead uh, yeah hi sir uh, good evening thanks for the opportunity i uh, just want to understand based on the bureau scrub that we have been doing for the existing customers what is the watch list pool of customers that we we have identified for the uh, based on the current portfolio where we can potentially uh, expect some steps or some action that we would like to take Uh, chief data officer basically uh, uh, we do the regular bureau scrap we also subscribe to bureau trigger so we get a real time update on the customer situation and say so we you are right we do create a kind of a watch list this is our score cards and this is what we see and we take actions accordingly thank you sir uh, so ma'am what i wanted to understand was uh, if you can give some indication what could be this pool Size to get a flavor on how long can this uh, credit cost continue. So while we can't uh, tell you the the number, the the thing is that it is a regular activity. Uh, it is conducted, uh, you know, as soon as we get the triggers. So it is as real time as we can do it. But of course, uh, you know, we we are the good part is that we do see an impact in terms of the inflow to selling country uh, has stabilized. In fact, it has uh, gone down marginally. So we are going to continue this activity. Yeah. And then, uh, secondly, the five lakh customers where we have reduced the limits. Uh, if, you, if you can give some sense on what was the exposure that was there to these customers before the reduction of limit, and where does it stand now? So uh, that is something uh, we would like to. Uh, not like to speculate upon but what we can tell you is that the reduction of limits is to around 25% of uh, their of their limits correct and the average limits have been around close to 1 lakh rupees so you can estimate sure uh, because i will say no thing when we are reducing the limits on these customers uh, were, because they, it would have been in watch list so if there was no uh, balances which were worth reducing and like 25% reduction does not impact the balances for this customers right balances outstanding 
So just want to sure. understand the nature of this reduction, like how, because uh, because the earlier comment that uh, management has given that uh, the delinquencies that we are seeing, uh, the customers for four to five years they were performing well, and suddenly they default, and uh, it's difficult to even recover anything. So just trying to understand uh, these actions that we are taking to cut the limits or anything else, like how do we get ourselves assured that uh, these will have some impact in terms of reduced delinquencies incrementally? Yeah, so how it works is that these customers who are getting identified as high risk or on a watch list, definitely these customers would have utilized their limits. Any customer who has not utilized the limits will not be on the watch list. So we wait for, we categorize them, we look for, wait for that opportunity when there is a headroom available and then we reduce the limits when at the appropriate time. So we, I mean, we uh, have an operational uh, uh, it's a mechanism for that, so we do it. Now, uh, does it prevent the customer from becoming delinquent? No. If some of them, not all, some of them do become, then at least they will be creating a loss less 25% or more, the limit that has been cut. Sure. So that is the best option, that is the best, best step that can be taken by us Considering that we are already committed to the limit, the limit has been utilized, we wait for an opportunity to reduce that limit, and if the account becomes delinquent and does not pay at all, somewhere we have, so we have cut our losses. Sure, sure. And so lastly, if you look at the share of interest earning assets, uh, despite all the effort that we are taking to increase the share of term lending, it has not moved up in the last one year. So uh, should we continue to expect that it would remain at the similar level? CSMO? Yeah, it will. Uh, so, Revolver is now stable at 24, and as we have stated earlier, if it stays between 23, 24, 25, it, it, it is a great thing at this point of time. Second thing is on the assets, because our uh, installment asset, uh, whatever is uh, customer spends and converts into installment, it usually runs out between 9 to 12 months and more installment asset is getting built and we are seeing that growth. This as a percentage share, a good mix would be 38, 39. Best case scenario, it can reach up to 40, but we would, uh, 38 to 40 is the range that we will, uh, we foresee in the next uh, three to four quarters. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Roshan Chutki from ICICI Prudential Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Just wanted to understand uh, if you can talk about the delinquency number uh, in terms of number of accounts. How has that moved over the past four quarters? Just wanted to understand whether, you know, is it that there are some chronic cases and the amounts in these chronic cases are increasing? Or you can alternately talk about the bounce rates as well. How are the bounce rates doing? And is the bounce rate that you are seeing stable? Uh, maybe, yeah, those numbers. CRO? I can give some broad indications of the trend. We don't disclose that level of granular information. Uh, so in terms of uh, delinquencies, our experience has been in line with the industry. So uh, if you look at the Red Bureau data, we have also been witnessing the same sort of trends, which are rising delinquencies over the last two years. Uh, generally, we are below the uh, industry average in terms of the, both 30 day as well as the 90 day. So that's what I can tell you about the trends. Uh, in terms of the uh, absolute numbers, in terms of low rate set sector, we don't disclose that. But since we've seen a rising trend in credit costs, they are caused by uh, worsening of low rates over the past two quarters. That we can certainly say that's what has caused the changes in credit cost number. And also increases in write-offs, uh, you can see that they are declared numbers, so they also indicate uh, similar trends in the uh, flow rates that are contributing to write-off and NCS votes. Okay. Uh, uh, how about uh, your um, guidance? I mean, in December quarter, I remember distinctly you said two quarters and things should be all right. Um, where are we now? So, we did say that we were anticipating for two quarters, but then look at the market which has uh, behaved, the way the market has behaved. What happens is that we create a watch list, 
we look for the trends we find that uh, there will be certain accounts which may have a tendency to flow now uh, what happens to the certain accounts which further get impacted out of those watch list itself and add to the delinquency while our expectations and our actions are based on our models everything is uh, an indicator we can only expect the best coming out of the customer behavior having a larger impact in the ecosystem if some more customers are unable to pay this will add to the delinquency thanks that's all from my side thank you the next question is from the line of shweta from ilara capital please go ahead shweta your line is unmuted please proceed with your question yeah am i audible yes ma'am yes. yeah um so uh, okay so my i have two questions first question um so if uh, you mentioned that we have added 9 lakh odd uh, customers or card additions this particular quarter you also mentioned that we have been selective and the number of new card additions are also declining each quarter but then you um, uh, we saw that last quarter we reduced limit for 1.5 lakh customers and this quarter in past 3 months like you mentioned in your opening remarks that number has gone up to 5 lakh um so what were the triggers or observations or signals that you observed in past 3 months that suddenly from 1.5 this number had to go to 5 lakh despite the fact that your new card addition incrementally have been coming down you also mentioned vintage customer having uh, i mean still showing slightly good behavior and also you being selective that's my first question yeah okay doctor So basically, we've been doing limit uh, uh, decreases for our uh, existing folks. So we're not putting new vintages. In the new vintages, we see the performance is satisfactory. Uh, so we, it's not there. We are actually uh, onboarding the customer, and over a short period of time, reducing the limit. That's not the case. For our existing portfolio, uh, like we had mentioned earlier, we have an early warning system, which includes looking at the payroll triggers, updates, looking at the payment radar. over time we have refined and we have created predictive models uh, looking at all you know further uh, you know attributes of the customer with us could be his uh, spending pattern etc basis which we have identified uh, you know a watch list which we would like to take action early we are also taking actions early uh, compared to the you know to the you know last quarter and the reason behind that is is that uh, you know we would like to address this problem early on in the uh, you know early on in this tranche year itself okay so just related question so how do we perceive this 8.5% credit cost going ahead so basically we are just trying to figure out a trend or any sort of parameter or factor which will help us forecast uh, what we could foresee uh, going forward So, what could be that parameter, or what could be that, say, you know, maybe new accounts addition coming down, or this uh, reduced limit uh, towards customers? That number. I mean, what is it that we should be factoring in to sort of get some sense on credit cost, uh, credit cost movement ahead? The credit cost um, will cannot be related to the new accounts. new accounts strategy acquisition strategy is uh has been formed up and will continue based on our experience and whatever um actions we have taken on the acquisition front uh, that is already on record we have stated how we have not we have stopped sourcing from certain geographies and all but so far as the credit cost is concerned as we stated that the um had expected based on our own analysis and the behavior um uh, of the customers on us offers trade lines all taken together the when we have created can categorize them we have expected certain 
uh, delinquency pattern. Now, what happens is that over a period of time, we are looking at overall impact of their total borrowing and the lifetime events, and those taken together, there is an incremental impact which is increasing the uh, customers. So, somewhere while we definitely have our own analysis and expectations, these get relied by the environmental impact on some larger accounts. So, unless the ecosystem improves further, somewhere these uh, uh, incremental additions we are seeing, seeing to continue for a shorter period. Okay, okay. So my second observation uh, sorry, is... Uh, Shweta, ma'am, may we request you return to the question queue? So just the second question, that, that second question was uh, very much related to first one. Waiting for their turn. Sure. Sorry, thank you. The next question is from the line of Jignesh Shial from Incred Research. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah, just two questions quickly. Uh, you know, one, uh, since you indicated that, you know, 60% uh, of your customers are, uh, you know, existing credit customers and 40% is non-credit, new to credit or non-card holders and all. So where are, basically, we are seeing uh, more of defaults happening from, uh, you know, 60 or 40, just, just rough cut. And secondly, this uh, existing uh, credit card customers, as you say, that balance 40 is basically coming from bank charan. So how the sourcing happens for the you know the the, the earlier the, the card customers and uh, is it is it uh, through more uh, through internally or externally no, externally is it how the commission structure plays out because uh, we have to understand how the the occurrence or the basically uh, uh, issuances are happening. So this are this would be my two questions. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, with respect to the sourcing uh, of uh, you know, from the banker channel, I'll take your second uh, question first. So the banker channel, we you know basically uh, look at their savings account and their relationship with the bank, and based on that, uh, we give them a credit facility. Of course, we have our uh, scorecards in place for new to credit and new to credit card customers, and uh, we look at their cash flow information, and based on that, we basically take our underwriting decision. So that is on the banker channel. On the uh, on the carded customers, they can come from the open market channel or the banker channel. We have specific scorecards for existing carded customers, where we take into account their card behavior outside, and accordingly we take a decision. I mean, do you want to know the process, or do you want to know? Uh, no, no. Just so understood, this is really helpful. But the 60, what what will be the 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 channels through which you are your so 40 I'm assuming is fully banka, then majorly banka say. So this 60 will be then through what sources? How much will be banka? How much will be others and all? Can you give some color on that? So uh, 60 out of that 60 close to 10 would be banka. Balance 50 would be close to 45 to 50 would be open market. And when we say open market, out of that, close to around 40% would be our co-brand partners because we work with there are a lot of co-brand partners that we work with. We have digital acquisitions uh, through Paytm. We have Reliance as a uh, co-brand partner where we position our people So on the Reliance store. So that is where there are some 30, 40% comes from our own stalls and uh, kiosks that we put up in the market. So it, it is different sources where it comes from. Understood. Understood. And and defaults would be uh, from 60 40. How how the defaults would be playing out? Rough cut, not not not, not exact numbers. No defaults are spread around. Okay, so it's non uh, credit. Uh, I mean the new to credit and uh, old credit. The, you're seeing the defaults across everyone the same. Yeah, yeah. Defaults are spread around. As I said, uh, it does not indicate any particular group or work. It's spread around. Understood. That, that's quite helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Uh, I said, uh, just on the OPEX data, I understand you said uh, it's uh, low, one because of lower card additions, and uh, your corporate spends have also been low. You expect this to recover going forward? 
yeah corporate spend we expect to recover uh, we expected to as we stated in our last call also that uh, this quarter we are expecting it to go up and q3 we expect it to be all close to original numbers uh, uh, but we expect it to recover and hence the uh, opex would increase accordingly okay okay and uh... Uh, another thing, your, your last quarter, I remember your credit card guidance was around 7%. Based on the current trends that you are seeing, would you revise it or what do you expect? Any comment on that? No, we had given a guidance of uh, 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 upwards of 7%. Right. So, right. so, so uh, we do see a downward trend uh, during the later part of the year. And uh, as of now, we can only estimate it to remain between 7 and 8 percent. We will continue to uh, hold on to that to be between 7 and 8 percent. Okay, okay. That's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ajit Kumar from Nomura. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to check on your ECL coverage and uh, you know method to calculate it. Uh, if you look at stage-wise PCR on a stage one and a stage two asset, coverage has been coming down from past few quarters. Uh, even on a stage three, right, uh, coverage has come down in this quarter versus last quarter. Uh, so why is coverage going down, especially on a stage one and two asset when it has been going up from fairly long period of time, like from last eight to nine quarters? And will you consider ramping up coverage ratios going forward? I'll take that one. Uh, so the ECL model consumes data over a long period of time. Uh, and this time, compared to the previous quarter, we've seen for all three uh, stages, one, two, three, the rates have come down. Uh, and this is driven by long-term eight quarter uh, or thereabouts worth of data. Uh, certain elements of the model uh, are refreshed on a quarterly basis, and one quarter data then gets added on, and another quarter's data from uh, previous two years gets dropped off. And that is what is causing the change in the uh, scale rates. Um, this is in line with the INDAS guidelines, and uh, this model is uh, uh, reviewed uh, annually by an external expert and is audited by multiple auditors. So the model itself is sound, and we've also done a back testing of the model, and uh, that satisfied our auditors and regulators. Uh, so that's on the model. Sure, sure, sure. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of MB Mahesh from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. So just one question. Um, when you are uh, when you are seeing the recovery efforts on the ground, and you see borrowers with multiple defaults uh, on their on their on the bureau, is how easy or difficult has been to put SBI cards uh, as a first point of repayment from a customer's perspective? Ah, so how does one predict? So what do we do? We try to find out as to the best of uh, the possibilities of trying to find the source of income, if any, if any. If we try to, if we get that and if we find a pattern on that, then definitely we identify and we try to be there on the doorstep on the date of the cash flow. But, but that is for the customers who are going to pay. What we are finding is that customers are unable to pay at all. In case of multiple delinquencies also, we, if we look at the bureau data, we find that a high percentage of our delinquent customers are offers delinquent too. So it's not a question of how I get my payment first. The fellow doesn't have money to pay. And wherever, wherever there are cash flows available, wherever we find that there is a possibility of payment, we have a, a promise to pay a scenario, we are there on the doorstep on the cash flow. So we do have those mechanisms in our collection efficiency. But uh, as I said, there are customers who are beyond that. Okay. And one, one clarification on this, um, Incrementally, are you seeing the uh, slightly larger ticket size uh, cards also showing delinquency or there is no trend in that as well? Yeah, so I mean, uh, I saw this discussion around two, three quarters back and also in uh, the domain. 
that the delinquencies probably were happening in the low ticket zones. No, we stated earlier also that we found it spread across and we still find it spread across. We find delinquencies at the lower limits as well as the mid to, uh, uh, when we say uh, higher limits, say up to going up to say three to four lakhs also. And there's no change in this trend? No, it's, it's absolutely, uh, as per our analysis, as per our uh, uh, reverse feedback from the ground based on the collection teams feedback, we find that these are more to do with the inability to pay irrespective of the vintage or the limit or the tier. I mean, it happens, it, it, it's happening across the portfolio. Okay, done, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Agarwal from UBS. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Vishal here. Thanks for the, for the opportunity. So two questions from my side. One, you yourself indicated that there is uh, more default in the industry and the segment is facing some strong. Now, how comfortable you are, you know, growing your book at 20% plus if you are seeing in the second industry? That question for Amazon. Yes. Uh, you're right. We are, uh, we pay careful while growing the book. So if you have noticed, we have already stated that we are not looking at increasing revolve. We are not increasing the revolve book. The book which is getting increased is the installment lending book where the customer is already spent on the card, which is which we have always stated that and that is a very good book that we have built. Second thing is, if you look at the number of customers or the uh, SIP growth, that is in the range of around close to 11% or so. Asset growth is more. So we are not looking at adding more customers and growing from those more customers. We are looking at our existing customers and trying to get more engagement with those customers and building the book there. So these are the two things that we are doing. So should we not expect like the receivable growth to slow down there in the in the near term? Slow down in? So for getting your loan book, should we not expect it to slow down to more like mid team or so if you are trying to be conservative here? No, no. So we have all, uh, always stated that our, uh, in fact, even in earlier calls, we have also stated that we expect the uh, card growth to be around 15 to 17 percent and another 5 to 7 percent coming from our, when you're looking at spend growth, from a spend per account. Uh, usually between, so 22 to 23, 20 to 23 percent is the spend growth that we have always been stating. And the asset growth lags that by a bit, so around anywhere between 15 to 18 percent is the asset growth. So we will we will continue to deliver those growth numbers, and uh, that is what we have indicated. Only thing is that we are looking at delivering these growth numbers from uh, low risk segment categories, spends which are more converted into installment lending because they give us interest, and the law, and the credit cost also has to be monitored accordingly. And the second question is actually on on the bank or the SBI channel. Now, when I look at your uh, delinquency, it's basically 20%, 19, 20% lower for SBI customers. But that also appears pretty high when we look at the SBI data. SBI is been reporting very good asset quality, even on the unsecured segment. So how are you getting this adverse selection? From their book, so what is what is going wrong there? Uh, we always we can see a card behavior will be slightly different from an unsecured loan behavior. Number one. Another thing is that for SBI, every unsecured loan may not be a NTC uh, for them. And uh, as I said, in across not only SBI, for across the industry, if we find, if we look at the unsecured loans, specifically the personal loan segment, they will definitely be doing better, even from, uh, interface between uh, the bank itself, wherever the card and card, it's uh, card is card is card business is part of the bank, between the same bank. The uh, personal loan will be, will be behaving better than the car. So, uh, 
so uh, you yourself can analyze it and you will see the change yeah in the gap is generally lesser but that's okay thank you thank you for the thought all the best thank you the next question is from the line of krishnan asv from hdfc securities please go ahead uh yeah i am open my thanks for taking my question uh, uh so you know this is part this is partly continuing from from what uh, from what the you know, previous two queries were by both vishal and nd uh are we reaching a stage now where you necessarily need to you know uh, prioritize uh you know asset quality stability over growth uh is it reaching a stage where it is becoming difficult to manage both because that's the perception that now seems to have uh, i mean it taken swing purely in terms of our inability to manage the credit costs i mean we are getting elevated almost every quarter uh, so if you did take the kind of product actions and interventions that you mentioned it's very difficult to imagine why this should continue to stay elevated by the credit cost should continue to stay almost record highs almost every quarter now right? and plus we are still saying it will remain between 7 and 8 percent it's not like a one time uh, so so there is obviously something with the behavior of customers which which we can understand but it, does that necessarily mean that now you need to take a step back to take a pause maybe prioritize asset quality stability because i'm sure the regulator is also looking at these things you don't want to give an impression to the regulator that it's becoming difficult to manage asset quality right uh i will not exactly agree with you uh asset quality can be a can be can be a a see a cyclical event also while asset quality will need to be managed it doesn't mean that one has to fold and fold up the shop and not do business at all but it is definitely important how do we do business what business do we do so when we do the new business new acquisitions expand our loan book how we do it is more important so that's what we have been doing and we will continue to do that simultaneously work on the delinquency work on the credit costs that is a separate thing to be handled and that will we will continue to handle that and and the business will continue the way it is there is no stepping back like my i mean the only reason i'm for the harping upon this is we have gone from about 6% credit cost nearly 2 years back i'm sure that itself was a bit elevated at the time and we have been actually doing a lot of these portfolio interventions right despite that these trade costs are not coming up and I, i mean i understand what you're saying that there is a system wide issue around some of these things and you can't be oblivious to that you can't be immune to that completely but but my only point was does it reach a stage where you then say okay fine instead of us trying to manage both the engines now can we focus on one over the other and you're saying that that that's not necessary yet so no, i as i stated i have already i made myself very clear uh and another thing is we have been to we did not start the portfolio actions two years back we started doing uh, doing it during last financial year when the signal started coming out it's not that for two years we have been doing portfolio actions and then we are at this stage the delinquency started somewhere previous financial year and they have continued and overflowed to this financial year also and somewhere we find that we are not the only one to have seen this kind of a behavior now my data is in public stand alone data is available so that's why i am subjected to more scrutiny but beyond that it doesn't mean that i should not be doing business i will be doing good prudent on business continue to do business while working on the collections and recovery efficiency also understood uh, so i completely take your point i think these trade card delinquencies are beginning to show up in a lot of other lenders so you are obviously not alone there uh, uh, i mean i take your point you you uh, mr krishnan may we request you return to the question queue for any follow up questions thank you the next question is from the line of uh, hardik shah from goldman sachs please go ahead 
Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my, I have only one question, which is, uh, can you explain how this index that C plus delinquency are computed? Uh, just wanted to get some sense. Yeah, okay, yeah. So the index delinquencies are a point of time indexation. So for example, if you look at uh, the chart on the bottom left, which is our open market to uh, SBI posting, the overall uh, number is taken as one, and the relative difference of SBI to that number is then indexed. Likewise for open market. So in this example, when it says 1.07, that means the SPI is the open market channel is 1.07 percent more than the overall average, and the SPI channel is 19 percent better. Understood. Here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We will take the last question from the line of Subaranchu Mishra from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Girish. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, two questions. The first one is, uh, what is the treatment of uh, GST recovery? Do we add GST to the principal outstanding uh, on the NPA forms, or we exclude it? That's the first. And uh, what is the NUNP uh, as of this quarter versus last quarter uh, uh, this year? Uh, sorry, uh, this quarter last year. Thanks. So uh, I'll answer the NUNP question first. Okay. So NUNP numbers now after the RBI's guidelines of 37 day inactive you have to close is almost same. So those numbers which used to be at one point of time in the industry with free cards floating around very very high with these RBI guidelines and we are charging fee based cards that's hardly anything. What we see is that almost close to anywhere between 95 to 97 percent of the cards we are able to within 37 days, get them active in one way or the other uh, and engage with us. So any NP problem after last NDC circular is not there. On the GST treatment on NPA accounts, sir. So, uh, so Banju, on any account, there is a certain hierarchy that we follow. Uh, whatever amount that we collect from the customer gets applied in a certain hierarchy. And of course, the statutory payments are uh, definitely prioritized over the other payments. Uh, so do we add the GST to the principal plus the fees that we charge? How do we, uh, what is the hierarchy for GST? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So when we calculate the total outstanding, all of these, pay, all of the dues, including the statutory dues, interest payment, etc., is calculated. And then based on whatever we recover from the customer, uh, the application is made as per the hierarchy. And in the, as per the latest regulation, the minimum amount due, Oh, full Good GST job. is included in that. The GST is included. Understood. And if I could just squeeze in one last question. Uh, what percentage of our uh, customers pay MAD on a quarterly basis? So, Shubhantu, we have not declared that number. Okay. Whereas, what you can uh, uh, look at is that almost 24% of our assets is uh, is a revolving asset wherein the customer pays between 5% to 100%. Not 100%, but 5 to 100%. And usually the uh, uh, revolving balance per customer is usually 2x to 2.5x of a normal balance. So if you calculate, you will get the numbers. Thank you. This was very helpful. Best of luck for the future quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would take that as our last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Avijit Chakravarti for closing comments. Yeah, thank you uh, everyone for uh, being with us and uh, having the fruitful discussion. So uh, we have experienced uh, so far as a business and uh, financial part is concerned. Uh, we definitely have uh, seen a good positive start. Uh, we would like, as I stated during the call also, we would like to see both separately. So when we say the good positive start, definitely this is a good uh, credit cost. Yes, definitely it remains a concern. We keep on working on it. So uh, SBI Card will continue with its journey of achieving sustainable and profitable growth. Uh, SBI Card is committed to higher standard of governance, ethics, and integrity for insurance business sustainability. Uh, 
I would like to share my gratitude towards our shareholders, investors, and business partners for their continued trust and support to SBI Fund. Thank you, and have a very good weekend. Thank you. On behalf of SBI Cards and Payment Services Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now discuss.